Welcome on the show. It's a Tuesday. It's Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. And um, we're discussing the Super Eagles and um, what Nigerians expect from the coach that um, the NFF initially want to. I will discuss this extensively and we will laugh over it. I can assure you, I will. <laughs> I've got an ex-international Super Eagles player on the show today. His name is Sam Soje. Sam, welcome on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Now, um, I've got Victor Irele, my, my, my partner on the show today. Um, Victor Godfrey. Godfrey. I've got him. V6, 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 we, V6 we call him. And um, we'll be asking you the questions together. But the first question would be, what kind of... Let's start with Sam. Let's, yeah. in your opinion, assess the Super Eagles so far. So far, so yeah. good or so far, so bad? No, I... I would say we um, we we are our lowest. I think um, we there's there's room for improvement, and uh, we just have to stay positive and uh, and go again. Sam, can I? I can, can hear you. you. Okay, I can hear you now. Okay, go on. Yeah, I no, I, no, I just say that you know it, it's not been good. Um, we didn't qualify for the World Cup, but. Um, we we at our lowest at the moment, and I think we just have to be pos positive and just go for uh, you know go again. Okay, so I'll come back to you now. Now, Victor, what he's saying is that Nigeria's super egos are their lowest as we speak. Well, it's it's uh, it's not it's not far from the truth. However, I still feel like uh, I mean. Um, what has let us down is just administration. Um, we are actually, if you, if you look at this current generation of players and look at the landscape of African football, you'll be scratching your head and wondering why this team is not dominant in African football. Exactly. Now, Sam, what Victor is saying now is that you're asking yourself, there's so much talent in that squad and you're, you're scratching your head. Why are we not doing well? I, I will tell you, I think Victor said it before, um, you know, you know, when it comes to the administrative side of things, we're not doing we're not doing okay. But but I'll bring a point out for you. I think as Nigerians, as the NFF, you know, uh, you know, I'll call his name, you know, Amaju and uh, his his crew. I think and Victor will will we'll accept this. I think we're so, so um um caught into this whole Premier League thing. Where we're you know, we're so obsessed with, with the Premier League. Um, the best players don't play in the Premier League. The best African players don't play in the Premier League. And, and, and because of that, the national team is suffering for that. And I'm English, so I, I'm not talking against the, 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 the Premier League. I'm just saying, as Nigerians, we're so obsessed and it, it, it's affecting our national team. And yes, we've got good players, but I don't think we've got the best African players playing for Nigeria. Now, um, Sam, you are the SA to the Delta State Governor in Sports. Amadou Pinik was involved somehow around the line in that period. Um, what has gone wrong? Can't you guys, can't anybody speak to him? Is he just the Lord of the Rings, you know? How does he do that? Oh, no, no, he's a man, man, man himself, you know. Um, he, you know, I, I, I'm not close to him, so I'm sure he has um, advices. But from, from outside, you, you, you can tell that he's, he's you know, he's his own man. It's hard to speak to him. But at the same time, we need better for Nigeria. It's not about Amadou. You know, we're not on your show to talk about him. We're on your show to talk about the national team, the Super Eagles. We, we need better. We definitely need better. Okay, now, this is the question I was going to ask you all day. What kind of coach do you expect the NFF to employ? It's not really about the, co uh, the kind of coach. The, who, who is really... Um, um, employing the coach, that, that that should be the question. We should have professionals who know what Nigeria needs, you know, uh, the philosophy of the coach that we need. Um, but if you ask me, I, I, I think we need a long-term kind of uh, plan. And, uh, you know, definitely there's no way you can go if the, your local league is not doing well. There's, there's no, it's a no-brainer. If your local league is not doing well, it's very hard for you to, to succeed in the international level. We have to get a coach that knows that he has to come to Nigeria and see the, the local league, you know, improving. And um, and that and that way, whoever we uh, invite to play for the national team has a chance because we need the local league to do well. Okay, now um, I'll, I'll come back to you, Sam. Now, Victor, 
He says the local league must do well. But I remember Clemens Westerhoff. Clemens Westerhoff took players from the local league, picked them out, Fididi George, Ajax, mm -hmm. Kano Akwa, Ajax, um, Okocha, Eitrend Frankfurt, and then he built a Galacticos mm. for the Super Eagles. And the 94 squad can conveniently be said to be the best ever. Yes, we can agree with that sentiment, but also to agree with Sam's point, Look at all the eras of the Super Eagles when we were very great. They'll go with 1980, Shegun, Mudela, and the rest of them. They all played in the local league. You come to the 90s, 94. Okocha didn't, wasn't born in Germany and then decided to play for Nigeria. Yeah. He started out in the Nigerian local league. Same with Amokachi, same with Rashidi Yekini, same with Kanu Wanko, same with all that, that golden generation that you just mentioned. Now, our, la our latest great moment, which was the, the one of victory in 2013 in the Nations Cup, uh, in South Africa under the late great Stephen Keshi, we had a blend of local and international players. Sure. Some of, in fact, if you look at the spine of that team, you could clearly see that team was, really, was made in Nigeria. Enyama, formerly with Eimba back in his earlier years, you had Obabuna, you had Mba. So you can see the spine of that team all the way to the attack. And it, that was the reason why we won the Nations Cup. Now, I have nothing against ex, um, you know, um, players who have who are born maybe in the UK or in Europe wanting to switch allegiances to play for Nigeria, I have no issues with that. But the reality of the matter is that what we have seen so far, we against Ghana, on paper, on paper we should be beating Ghana black Like and every blue. day. In fact, we should beat them like their nickname. Yeah, like we every day, them yes. black, Like the black stars. Yeah. Them, they'll be white. When we, when we finish beating them, they'll become the black stars again. But the Ghanaians played, their goalkeeper was from his place in the third division or so in England. Not even in the championships. Okay, Sam, I'll come to you on that one. Um, Victor agrees with you and says, okay, yes, the structure is bad in Nigeria. My point is, we are actually fielding players from better structures. Players who grew up abroad or players who actually play abroad. Should that not be a plus for us? Sorry, please. Can I say again? Now, I'm saying that Victor agrees with you and says, yes, the structure is bad in Nigeria. But now we filled, we filled players who actually ply their trades abroad, who live abroad, train with better structures. Shouldn't that be an advantage to the Super Eagles? Yeah, um, um, but, but the only uh, one side to it as well is that the, the, the local league has gone really backwards. Like what Victor is saying, I, I, I agree as well, that the, the blend has to be there. but but. I've worked in Nigeria for a couple of years now. Um, I, I was born in London. I, I decided to play for Nigeria. But the, the main thing now, the, the, the distance of the foreign-based players and the local players have gone really, really far. So far that, you know, you cannot compare. So I understand where uh, the, the coach might not see any player at the moment to play for the national team. But at the same time, that's why we have to come back home and work hard get people that want to work and get this, this um, local league to the standard where uh, they can compete with the foreign-based players. But to be honest with you, the distance with the local players and the foreign players are very, are very far apart. Before I let you go, Sam, let me put a little humor into it, into all of this. Now, the Cote d'Ivoire, the Ivorian coach, said that when they played Nigeria under Stephen Keshi, the last person he thought would give him problems in match was Sunday Mba, and it was the yeah. one that scored the second goal that actually ended the, uh, the Cote d'Ivoire's um, chances and run. And basically, yeah. after Vesterhoff, the coach who has actually hit the limits for me has been Stephen Keshi. Gennot Raw yeah. for me has done nothing. Even Edward yeah. Voin has done quite a bit more than Gennot Raw. Now, quickly before I let you go, what would you advise? A home-based coach who knows Nigerian content, how it will work, and how the league works, and how you can walk around it and get players from there, or a foreign coach again? And if a foreign coach, yes, of what quality are we looking for? Sam, can you hear me? Yeah, that's all. Okay, okay, we're back to the studio now. But for some reason, I'm sure it's network problems. But I wanted to know what quality of coach Sam would expect us to have, you know? Well, I can't speak for Sam, but I can speak for myself. Of and course. I'll tell you this. I don't even think 
right now, the issue of the Super Eagles is about coaching, to be honest with you, because the, the problems are still there. The same players will still be invited. We're still going to have this. It's not as if a new coach comes now and then every other player that's played for the Super Eagles in the last three months or even the last one or two years will just go you know, out the window. We'll still have the same team, literally, more or less. But like we said, we need to work on the infrastructure and the administration of the league. But let's talk about expectations of coaches. If we want to go through the forming route, which top-level tacticians will really have time to stay in Nigeria to have attention, with, uh, you know, give attention to our players, not forgetting that sometimes they are owing these coaches money, especially with Bernard Rodgers, still, yeah. still, still being owed some, some areas. Then also, the political, you know, the politics that goes behind of selecting players to play for, well, this guy must play, or that guy must play, or this, this is my player, and they just say, well, this is my player, you must play at least for the Super Eagles, or something like that. So with all those backdoor politics, uh, poor infrastructure and administration, which coach with integrity want to really come to Nigeria? I mean, I saw the shortlist, and I was, I, was, I was laughing at, like, Laurent Blanc, a World Cup winner. Laurent yes, Blanc? Yes, he's on, come the, on. on the list. You have Jose uh, Pesier, These coaches Pesiero. would rather, if they have to come to Africa, mm. maybe because the money lures them to Africa, mm -hmm. They'd rather go to South Africa. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, because... You know, we it, joked about a, Jose Mourinho. Exactly. Like, <laughs> it's a better structure there. Yeah. They'd rather go to Egypt, Mo mm. Salah. North They'd Africa. rather go to Senegal. Yeah. Say the Omani. We don't have those kind of players. So, so here's, how, here's how I say it now. I, I, for me, as much as people will criticize Eguavon for not qualifying for the World Cup, I'll still strongly believe that he should have still be there now. They should hear me out for a minute because everyone will say, what is, what is he talking about? The coach of Senegal was given five years to give Senegal their first ever trophy. Bruno Metsu was their coach in 2002 with all the greatness that they had. In fact, they had a better team, in my opinion, in 2002 than right now. Right now, yeah. That team was with superstars. Diop, uh, Fadiga, you know, this, the list is endless. Henry Kamara, they had some amazing players. Sissé, Diop. But Sissé won the Nations Cup for them in Cameroon just a few months ago. But he had time. He had five years to get that stuff. So that. it's a long-term project. So if you have a Nigerian coach, in my opinion, have a Nigerian coach. We have a way we do our things in Nigeria, and we know foreigners. And Nigerians know. know. We know foreigners Nigeria. don't they know. They don't know. We have a, we have our way to how we do things. And you have an ex-international who has also been there, who has worked with all these you know NFF officials, maybe in the nineties as well when we were also younger men. So they know how we do things. And as 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 well now work with the team and have a plan. England reaching the semi-finals of the World Cup and the finals of the Euros, that was no fluke. Yes, we might, we might diss them and say, oh, they have um, such a massive media hype around their teams, but England planned these things. They actually planned it. After they had a very dis dismal World Cup in 2014, they said, okay, what is the long-term goal? They won the under-20 World Cup, won the under-17 World Cup. People don't remember this. England did that in back-to-back. -back. Okay, I, 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 wow. She is always, always on my back, <laughs> <laughs> really. Um, don't forget Villarreal, okay. Villarreal and Liverpool take on each other today. Mm. And um, Liverpool have only got half the job done as far as Jurgen Klopp is concerned. Mm -hmm. um, before I go on the show, thank you very much, Sam Soje, ex Super Eagles International, for joining us today. Thank you very much. Okay, and of course that was Sam Soje. Um, he joined us um, on the show today. We discussed um, the what we expect from, from, Super Eagles, the, yeah. from Super Eagles and the coach to, to, we're waiting to see. Um, thank you very much, V6, Victor Godfrey. Always a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lawal. He's behind the screens. You can't see him, but he makes you see us. Thank you very much, Francis Indem. I call him Francois. I call him, well, Indem. He corrects me, this is Indem. Okay, <laughs> Shei is always my problem. <laughs> and I'll deal with that <laughs> after the show. Thank you very much, Shedrak. Call him Sheddy in the powerhouse downstairs. Thank you very much, Osas. He produced the show today, of course, under the tutelage of Paul George, PG. I call him President General. General, same time tomorrow, same station, Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. I thought you were accepting an award. You were thanking everybody. <laughs> that's what I do. Now. That's, what I, that's, what, that's, what, that's what I do. <laughs> My name is Wally Scott. <laughs> like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sport. I leave you with Andy Murray. He took out Dominic Thiem in the Madrid Open.